Well, this here will be the next project. It's a little secretary desk. I'm not sure what you call those things, but uh, it's, uh, as you can see, very dark stained. The couple that uh, own it, they're wanting it sanded down and um, just putting a medium stain on it. They told me to use my judgment. Just didn't want anything dark like this anymore. This thing is in fairly decent shape. It does have a deep gouge or two in it. You can see one of them there on the lid. Backside, don't have to do anything with it. It's just a pegboard. They got some pads on it to give a buffer between it and the wall. Got those old curled up legs again. This drawer has a little design on it. We'll go ahead and start taking the desk apart now. We'll take the lid off first. Seems like a reasonable place to start. So I'm taking the back off of this. It's just a perforated board, but uh, it's only got little flathead screws holding it on. I really didn't want to take this thing apart, but after a close uh, inspection of it, as usual, got into more than I expected. Man, as we got this uh, cracked side. And we might as well see if we can get this other piece apart too for sanding purposes. You see they had a few nails in this one. I'm sure this side does too. But, uh, Seems to have one right there. Looks like maybe one or two down here.
ahead and pour us. This is some old stuff. $7 at Walmart. I'm telling how many years ago that was. Pour it on generously. I'm sure this stuff is uh, probably 30 to 40 years old. Back when my brother was into woodworking back in the 80s. Now we'll see if this stuff will scrape off. I'm amazed at some of the neat gouges in this stuff. See these places here, it's uh, like gouges in there. So I've got this side sanded down with the exception of the curly parts on the legs, on that leg anyway. This side here I still black sand and of course the uh, drawer and the uh, top and shelf on the cabinet I have them sanded you can see that the uh, the veneer on the uh, top there the lid is a darker shade of wood than the rest of it and of course this uh, this here is the very top I haven't done anything other than scraped it so far but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit that with a sander and show you how it uh, how it sands down we'll do it quickly This tabletop seems to have a year possibly stamped into it. I don't know if that would be like 1977. I'm sure it's not a 1877 because it's not that old of a piece. But uh, it might not even be 1977. It may just be some kid playing around stamped into 77. But I'm going to leave it in there. It's back at the back. Will be under the roll top there is not a roll top but a flip top so it's not going to be seen anyway unless someone opens the thing up and looks at it but i'm just going to go ahead and finish sanding this year off and uh once i get the stain in there it'll be i guess a little less noticeable it may bring it out more for all i know but we'll find out so now I have all the pieces sanded down, ready to stain again. I'm gonna put uh, like a medium type of stain on them, hopefully. See how it absorbs. It's got this uh, one piece over here that's got some kind of veneer on it, which is gonna, I'm afraid, gonna stain a little bit darker than the rest of it. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, I guess. I'm gonna start out with a lighter color stain and We'll see how it works. Well, as you can see from the still shot here, even though I used a light colored stain, golden oak, it still stained dark. 
and what's going to be a whole lot darker than the rest of the cabinet on this particular piece. I therefore elected to just go ahead and put veneer on the whole project. This piece also had a very deep gouge down the left side, which in this picture here it would have been up there around the top, but it was very noticeable, so it's probably best just to go ahead and put veneer on this. Well, I think that may match a little bit better. What do you think? So in order to keep this desk from having different types of wood on it, I've elected to just go ahead and put veneer on all surfaces. So this year will be the fold down part and uh, I have a piece cut for the drawer front which will be here I have another piece cut for the top and then I still like the sides here morning YouTube it's another beautiful day here in our part of the country as you can see it's raining again we seem to get rain every two or three days and then it rains for two or three days but this time of the year which is uh, end of January I guess it beats having snow we'll take it today what we're going to be working on is uh, putting a coat of polyurethane on our uh, little desk I'm gonna determine what this thing's actually called hopefully before I publish this video but uh, I got the thing all laid out here I'm gonna go ahead and get started with it I got the uh, shop war shop warmed up turned a little bit of heat on there a minute ago and uh, we'll go ahead and get this thing uh, Paint it up with the polyurethane, let it dry for several hours. It, uh, they recommend 
I think maybe four hours or something on this uh, particular kind of polyurethane. It may just be two or three hours, but uh, it's still a little tacky. I have found after two to three hours, so I actually like to give it a whole day because once I start using the uh, steel wool to sand it off with, if it's got any moisture at all in it, it just leaves balls of polyurethane on there and you don't want that. So we'll go ahead and get started with this and uh, get these things coated down right quick. Shouldn't take too long. I'll put you on a time lapse so it don't bore you too bad. Well, we got our first coat of polyurethane on the uh, desk now. And we'll let this dry up. Give it a little sand down and do it all over again. Okay, I'm gonna hit this uh, secretary desk with, I guess some uh, 600 grit sandpaper. Before I put the uh, second coat on there. Here I'm going to apply some Johnson paste wax to the bottom of the drawer and the runners to enable it to slide a little bit better.
and there is your finished product turned out pretty nice coming from the dark almost black color to a light and golden oak I think they'll let it back in the house as of this recording as you can see it still does lack the uh, lid support those sort of got tied up in the mail somewhere we're still waiting on those we'll get them on there Well, that about wrap up another episode of Life in the Gap. I do appreciate you watching, and I hope that you'll consider subscribing and hit that like button. Appreciate you.